Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher, and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. And my name is Jesse Shanks, and I am the Small Ruminant Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. We are presenting a video study series focused on sheep-related topics for Skillathon. This particular episode will focus on the ruminant digestive system. We will talk about the main differences between ruminants and non-ruminants, along with examples of each, as well as describe the structure and function of the ruminant digestive system and what makes it unique. Farm animals are generally classified as ruminants or non-ruminants. These classifications refer to the structure and function of their digestive system, as well as the type feed that is, that is the basis of their diet. Non-ruminant animals possess a monogastric stomach and are sometimes called simple stomach. Their structure and function is very similar to that of humans. They primarily eat a grain-based diet. Farm animal examples include swine and poultry. While horses are also non-ruminants, they would not be called simple stomached. They are actually hind gut fermenters, which means that the cecum functions as the site of fermentation, much like the rumen in cattle. Horses primarily have a forage-based diet like ruminants. You will often hear that ruminants have four stomachs. That is not true. They have one stomach with four compartments, the rumen, reticulum, omasum, and abomasum. Each compartment has a distinct function as it relates to the digestion of ingested feed. Ruminants are generally fed a forage-based diet. Farm animal examples include sheep, goats, beef cattle, and dairy cattle. The first compartment is probably the most popular compartment, the rumen. It is commonly referred to as a large fermentation vat. It serves as the host for microorganisms primarily bacteria and protozoa, which are responsible for the fermentation that breaks down cell wall content of ingested forages. The rumen wall is lined with papilla, which serve to increase the surface area of the tissue and allow for increased capacity for nutrient absorption. The second compartment is the reticulum. It is commonly called the honeycomb because of the honeycomb appearance of the reticulum wall. The reticulum sets in front of the rumen and is the place where non-food items end up after being digested. This could include nails, wire, and other hardware items. These items can puncture the reticulum wall and cause hardware disease, which could lead to death. Rumen magnets are commonly administered to ruminants as a prevention for hardware disease. Next is the omasum, which is commonly called mini plies because it looks like pages in a book. The major function of the omasum is water absorption. The fourth and final compartment is the abomasum. The abomasum is the compartment that functions much like the gastric true stomach of a non-ruminant. Digestive en enzymes break down ingested feed here. Most forages are made up of cellulose and hemicellulose. Sheep, like other animals, are not able to digest these complex carbohydrates on their own. The ruminal fermentation is made possible by the rumen microorganisms. They give sheep and other ruminants the ability to graze land that is not well suited for anything else and turn the forages into high quality meat, wool, and milk. 
the microorganisms and the sheep live in a symbiotic relationship. That means that it is beneficial for both. The animal provides a warm place to live with a constant source of food, room and board, so to speak. The microorganisms break down the ingested forages into a usable form that can be used by the animal that otherwise they would not be able to use. Here is a microscopic view of rumen microorganisms. The large brown oblong shapes are one kind of microorganism that is eating and breaking down forages for the animal. The primary end products of this ruminal fermentation are volatile fatty acids, or VFAs. They are the main source of energy for the animal. The three main VFAs are acetic acid, or acetate, propionic acid, or propionate, and butyric acid, or butyrate. The microorganisms also produce other nutrients for use by the animal. They can turn non-protein nitrogen into microbial protein. Urea is a common example of non-protein nitrogen. There are also some B vitamins that are produced by fermentation. There are also byproduct gases such as carbon dioxide and methane that are a result of ruminal fermentation. These gases can build up and cause bloat in the animal. If they are not released, they can lead to the death of the animal. Sheep will graze for a period of time and then will ruminate, which basically consists of regurgitating, rechewing, and re-swallowing the forages that they have consumed. This works to reduce the particle size and aids in further digestion for the animal. That wraps up our discussion of the ruminant digestive system. Please understand that we only hit the high points of the ruminant digestive system and the fermentation that takes place within the rumen of sheep. This process is much more complex than what we talked about today, and there are many other structures and functions that contribute to the anatomy and physiology of the ruminant digestive system. We wish you the best of luck as you progress through your sheep project. Please let us know if we can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.